Today we're going to talk about managing CO2 and oxygen in your wine. I'm Greg. I'm Julie. And we're the Crafty Winers. Carbon dioxide or CO2 is a byproduct of fermentation. It's created by the yeast when your wine is fermenting. Most organisms don't like swimming in their own waste, so I don't think yeast were probably any different. It's good to get the carbon dioxide away from the yeast from time to time at least. So ultimately the CO2 is bad in wine because it can produce bad tastes and smells. And if the CO2 is a product of the fermentation and you bottle it, it can also result in bottle bombs, which we've had experience with many years ago. Not wine that we made. No, not wine that we made. <laughs> Many years ago, um, our first experience, actually, very first experience with home-brewed wine. Some friends of ours gave us a couple bottles of wine. He opened one of them in the kitchen. I guess the first one made him I didn't not op open the I, other one. I didn't open the second one. <laughs> so he opened it, and it just went all over the cabinets and the walls and the floor and the ceiling and uh, it was a mess. So needless to say, we didn't have a real great experience with home brewed wine the, <coughs> the first time. Hey, Nori. <laughs> that's an extreme case of CO2. And that's, that's because the person that made the wine didn't make sure the fermentation was done before he bottled it. So that you guys aren't gonna make that mistake, I'm sure. Of course not. I'm getting- Not now. <laughs> I'm being chewed on by our corgi. <laughs> She apparently wants to see you all. She wants to join the party. Hi, Nori. Hi, Nori. Hi, baby. Yes, you good girl. You good girl. Now will you quit chewing yeah. on my hand because it kind of hurts. So I like to remove CO2 a couple times throughout the fermentation process. And I'll remove as much CO2 as I can. The first times I'll also add oxygen back in. And we're going to show you how we do that. I'm not saying that uh, everybody needs to do this. It's just what we do. We seem to make a better product this way. So choose if you'd like to do it or if you don't, but we're gonna show you how we do it. I use a food saver to remove CO2. Other people use pumps and other devices that I've seen advertised. Food saver we already had laying around. I figured out sizes of tubing and, and attachments that we could use to make up connect to our bungs. And I'll show you that as well finally made our food saver useful. Yeah, it was just sitting on our counter taking up space. <laughs> it, it sat for several years not really being used. A lot of people are gonna say CO2 is good in your carboy because it provides a barrier to keep oxygen out. That may be true to some extent, but we've never had a problem with oxygenation. So aging in the secondary fermenter, uh, the, the CO2 does naturally leak out. So it will go away over time. If, you, if you're doing aging and secondary fermenter for like a year, most likely you're not gonna have to worry much about getting the CO2 out before you bottle. I would still check it probably before I bottle to make sure that you don't have any bubbles left coming out. Stirring the wine is a traditional way of getting the CO2 out. Which he hates. I hate it. <laughs> that almost kept me from getting into this, this craft uh, because I hated it so much. I just, I'm not a patient enough person to sit there and stir for 10 minutes. But that is a way that you can get CO2 out. If you're patient, go ahead and do that if you don't have a food saver and don't wanna spend 40 bucks for one. But I will have uh, a link for a basic model food saver on Amazon down in the description. It won't be the one that we have because ours is pretty much an antique, I believe. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I'll find one that's a good price and, and link that. But I guess the, the main thing is before you bottle it, it is really important to have as much CO2 removed as possible. Um, and he already said that there's other ways to do it. Um, and like he said, he's not patient. Surprise, surprise. So stirring is not his preferred method. So thus, the food saver. Oxygen now uh, is good for fermentation. The yeast have to have oxygen to thrive. A lot of people will rock their carboys during fermentation, especially we're seeing with white wine. You can uh, stir it, you can do other things to get oxygen in. I use an oxygen wand, an aerator, and we're gonna show you that. I haven't been using it for a terribly long time, but it seems to be pretty effective and you don't have to use it for very long. 
And actually with our Chardonnay that we've got going right now um, that we're actually going to use for this demonstration because it needs to be degassed and oxygenated. But every day I've swirled it. So I take the bung out and swirl it and smell it, make sure it smells good um, to give it some more oxygen. Today will be the first time that we oxygenate or degas that Chardonnay. Yep. Um, We'll get, the, get more into detail in a minute. Too much exposure to oxygen after fermentation can be bad. It can destroy or mute the flavors, the smell, even the color. This is called oxidization. This is part of why you just don't let wine sit around open uh, on the counter or whatever. There are other reasons why you might want, not want to do that for days <laughs> on a time. <laughs> we, never, we never have that problem. We don't let it sit it around for days. Yeah, it doesn't last. <laughs> doesn't last overnight most of the time. Due to that and the potential problems with oxidization, you probably don't want to add uh, any oxygen to your fermenting must within about three days of when you think the fermentation is going to be done. So in the case of our Merlots, I won't do it after the sixth day because I see the fermentation ending as early as the ninth day. Chardonnay at a cooler temperature that we ferment our Chardonnay uh, it can take three, four weeks before fermentation is done. Yeah. So I change my schedule a little bit on Chardonnays, but it's important to not put oxygen in right before the yeast are going to quit consuming that oxygen. So just kind of pay attention and try to make sure that you, it has at least three days of fermentation left every time you oxygenate. And yeah, after bottling, um, when we open our wines, we generally aerate them right before drinking. Some people use decanters uh, for red wine. Obviously, you know that red wine, it's good to let it breathe before you drink it. Um, we're not patient enough to put it in a decanter, so we use this handy dandy little thing that on, we got on Amazon on also. Amazon. We'll link it. It's a happy medium. Doing that right before you drink it makes it taste better. <laughs> Too much exposure to oxygen, like we said, is a bad thing. Yeah, so, ruins moderation. it. And like I said before, you don't have to do this oxygenation and uh, degassing that I do. We just like to do it. We feel like it makes a difference in the taste. It also gives me hands-on time with my wine. I like to spend time with my wine every once in a while, even before I drink it. He likes um, to spend more time with his wine than me. It doesn't whine as much. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to drink for that one. So now we're going to go ahead and show you our setup. And I'll explain what we're doing, and then we're gonna so we're gonna degas it to take CO2 out, which that also takes the oxygen out. So then immediately afterwards, we're gonna oxygenate it. We'll show you. Okay, so here's our antique food saver. I think we probably bought this like maybe as many as ten years ago. So oh, longer than that. It's one of the probably one of the first models, but they haven't changed it a terribly lot, so it still still works. You, I think, always get an accessory tube like this one. This fits in here. These are used with marinators and uh, other devices you can get. So you stick that in in there. If you have a food saver, you probably already have this. Or if you buy a new food saver, you're going to get this, the tube and the food saver. I bought an additional accessory hose from Amazon. They're not expensive. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to do multiple things. For one, this isn't very long. Um, and I usually can't get it that close to my wine safely. So I wanted to be able to extend it. So I bought, I kept buying silicone tubing until I found tubing that was the right dimensions for what I wanted to do. I'm going to put the dimensions of the tubing up on the screen because I don't know them off the top of my head. I have to go back and look at my order history. But the interior of the tube is exactly the right size for the accessory hose to plug into it. So now I have a much longer hose. So that's the first thing that it accomplishes. But the other thing that it accomplishes is now I can plug another accessory hose into the other end and I just used a small drill bit and drilled a hole through a solid bung and now the tube fits into that. This isn't perfect, it's silicone tubing and it kind of likes to come apart sometimes so you have to kind of be patient with it and I can be sometimes. The solid bung with the hole drilled through it allows me to use this just as a bung in any carboy basically and then I also the outer dimension on the silicone tube is exactly the right size to go into a standard drilled bung and it fits in Wow! like that. So it's multi-purpose because of the size of the tubing. Yeah, I had to buy like four different 
tubes with different sizes to finally find this one that was perfect. You kind of MacGyvered that, didn't you? I kind you? of MacGyvered it. Yeah. Cool. So we'll bring out our Chardonnay and actually show this in use. Okay, so this is our March 2024 Chardonnay, batch number 28. We have a video showing us starting this, if you haven't seen it. It was... We started was, it on the 8th. Mm -hmm. And today is the... My watch is going dead. So it's been a week. It's the 15th. It's been so exactly it's been, a week. It's been a week. And it's still bubbling really happily. Still happy. We're going to degas it and it's going to get really excited. The, the very first time that you do the degassing, there is a ton of CO2 in there, as you might expect. So the, the nice thing about having these multiple ways, either using the bung with the drilled hole or a regular bung, is I don't have to take this one out. I don't want to uh, take it out because I don't want to disturb this any more than I have to. So this silicone tube should fit right into that hole in the bung, and it did. Look at that. So let's see what kind of eruption we get. Um, so, how long do you do this for? I do this for 10 minutes at a time. It always seems to work out that on the third 10 minute session, there's not much CO2 left. Don't worry, you don't have to sit through all 10 minutes of this. No, we're not gonna make you sit through <laughs> 10 minutes. We're gonna actually do this though, because it is time for this to be yep. degassed. So we will be sitting here for 10 minutes. Unfortunately, we can't fast forward ourselves. Man. So, I turned this on, now I'm going to hit the accessory button and that's going to start the process. Let's see how excited this is getting now. Woo! Holy crap! <laughs> yeah. So you can just kind of sit there and insert the tube until it gets too close to the top. And this first time that you degas is the only time that it'll be this this challenging. After that, it gets boring. And by the end of this 10 minutes, it won't be doing this either. But yeah, there is a lot of CO2. So I can hold it in there just at the right place and I won't have to keep pulling it out. Now at some point, the food saver is gonna decide that it's done enough work and it'll turn off for this cycle. So then you have to start it again. Correct. And I started this basically a, a minute ago. So yeah, I just put enough. I'm keeping the section from being complete uh, just by where I'm positioning this so that this is not crawling further up the neck than it is right now. It takes a little bit of practice, but the worst thing that happens is your food saver sucks up a bunch of foam. <laughs> but you can see how excited those bubbles are right now. Now the reason the food saver is not turning off is it doesn't feel like it's got a vacuum going on. It eventually will, there, there, it goes. there it goes. It eventually does turn off. So then you just turn around and hit it again. And I'm just gonna keep doing this for 10 minutes. So we're not gonna make you sit through any more of that. We'll be back. Okay, so we did this for 10 minutes and uh, this wine is still has a lot of CO2 in it. But I'm gonna go ahead and end this now because my ears can't take any more of it. The, usually the food saver will turn off just as its regular cycle, which is maybe 10 seconds long. But because there is so much CO2 in this, uh, it doesn't turn off very often because it's not, I can't let it get a complete suction. So those, <laughs> all the bubbles that you saw coming up and that you still kind of see coming up are mostly CO2 with some oxygen and probably some other gases. But if you noticed the bubbling before we started this, it's a teeny fraction now of what it was. I mean, it's just barely bubbling now. So we did remove a lot of the oxygen that the, the yeast need to survive. So now we're gonna put oxygen back in. Okay, so this is how we put the oxygen back in. I looked at quite a few methods before I chose this one. This is an aeration wand that came from Amazon. This is an oxygen tank for small torches, but there's a regulator that came with the wand. I got this from Ace Hardware in our local town here, and it was, I think, $12. Basically, you use this little regulator to turn the oxygen on. You want to have it in the must at that point. This has been sterilized, like all of the stuff that we're showing you will always sterilize. We have a sterilization video that you can watch to see how to do it with star sand. So I put this in there. I want it to be pretty close to the bottom, not necessarily touching the bottom, but pretty close and then slowly turn the knob. And this just, 
it'll be nothing, 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 and then all of a sudden it could explode. So you have to turn very slowly. But I noticed that it's on my regulator, it's basically a full turn before it starts turning on. So another chance to embarrass myself. <laughs> There's a red arrow on here. I have never noticed any oxygen coming out until that red arrow is pointed back towards the tube. So it's a full rotation. But then it comes out, it starts coming out fairly fast. So be ready for it. And there's a delay. So you, it could have <laughs> bubbles coming out at the bottom that you don't know are coming up right away. So when you get back around to that 360, very slow. There it is. See the, here comes the oxygen. This could, is like chemistry class. Better than chemistry because you can't normally drink what you make in chemistry class. Well, you could, but you don't want to. <laughs> There was, there was Billy that did that. Didn't end well. No. I don't do this for, for very long. I usually do this for about 60 seconds. There are millions of little bubbles of oxygen, pure oxygen, that are going through the must right now. You can see them. Yeah. And I'm moving this around. I'm going to be a little brave and turn it up a little bit more. Uh-oh. The tank lasts for a long time. I guess probably I never tried to track how many minutes, but it lasts a long time as long as you're using it the way that I'm showing you and not putting too much oxygen into your must. <laughs> I didn't look at my watch when we started this, but I'm guessing this has been maybe 45 seconds. So I'm going to end here in just a second. But yeah, this is good for the yeast. This gives it lots of oxygen. This is a lot more than it would get from swirling or really any other method that I'm aware of, of reoxygenating after you degas. So for Merlot, I do a degassing on the third day. I do a oxygenation right after that. On this Chardonnay, we're doubling that time frame. So instead of the third day, it's around the sixth day. Kind of get an idea of before you do this probably, uh, of when you expect fermentation to normally end for that particular wine. And make sure that you're not adding oxygen too close to the end of fermentation, for there is a possible possibility of oxygenation. That almost got away from me. Yeah. <laughs> that was just me turning the wrong direction when I was trying to turn it off. But that's it. So this has been this has been degassed and reoxygenated, and it should be nice and happy now. We brought out a Merlot that is it was on the fourth of March. Today is the fifteenth. It's eleven days old. So I'm just degassing this. Obviously, it's well past the nine days, and we're a day or two behind because we weren't able to record this on the day that we wanted to. So I'm going into my uh, standard hold bung with silicone tube, and you're going to notice that this one acts a little differently because this does have a lot of the CO2 out already because it's been degassed. So I do my accessory, and watch how this is different. <laughs> yeah. It's got some, but not like the Chardonnay. And the food saver is going to stop here. That's how it normally works after the first time that you degas it. This, this will run for, I think, I don't know, I didn't count, but 10 seconds probably at a time, and then it shuts off. So then you hit it again. And we'll do this for 10 minutes, and then we're good. And I'm not aerating this, as I mentioned before. So it's been 10 minutes. I just want to show you how different it is now at the end of the 10 minutes when I do this. Not nearly as many bubbles and they're much bigger. So I've gotten a lot of the CO2 out. So this is the 11th day. We're not going to do it on camera, but we're going to take a specific gravity reading. Uh, if you haven't watched our video on that, it'll be linked. Uh, but we're going to check it, and then we'll check it again in a couple of days because I suspect this is probably about done fermenting. So we'll take it tonight. We'll take it in two days. If it's the same, then this is ready for racking. So we hope you liked our video on degassing and aerating the wine. Um, if you did like it, please click the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel. Tell it you want to see all of our videos. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.